What is going on everyone? White Citadel back in the ring world once again trying to get out of this video game funk I have been in because it does not make for a good gameplay channel when you don't actually get gameplays ever. So I've been playing some Halo 3 and the reason I've been playing this game along with some Halo Reach is basically practice for Halo 4. Halo 4 is kind of the game that I really 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 care about. It's like the Dark Knight Rises of video games in my opinion something I'm just really excited for, been waiting for for a long time, and I want to be very good at it. And Halo is a game that you kind of have to keep up with to keep your hand-eye coordination. As you'll see in this gameplay, I have some sloppy BR. I do end up with a really nice score. I believe it's 30 and 6, and it's a game to 50, so I thought that was a good gameplay to put up. But it's not like riding a bicycle. You can't just hop into Halo and do well. You need to kind of stay refreshed and refined. So I'm going to keep playing this and Halo Reach along with some Call of Duty in between so that when Halo 4 comes out I'm ready to go and the question that I've been asked and I've talked to some of my friends in the gaming community is which game should we play to really warm up for Halo 4 Halo Reach or Halo 3 those are really our two options right now and it's kind of a tough question because Halo 4 is gonna have a little bit of both it's gonna have a lot of the power-ups it's gonna have the DMR so Reach would be a good choice but at the same time it looks like the old-school style uh, quick paced battle rifle battles that we see in Halo 3. So it's pretty difficult to pick one game and stick to it. That's why I recommend you guys, we, we all just play both of them. If you're looking forward to Halo 4, play both of these games. And I'll tell you why. First of all, it's not going to be like Halo 3 in terms of power-ups. It's going to be like Reach. There's going to be uh, a shield. There's going to be universal sprint for every class. There's going to be you know kind of the same style of power-ups we saw in reach they're different which is cool they change them up but the same concept applies there's gonna be a lot of things that are gonna change the pace of the battle for example the uh, what was it called the armor lock in Halo Reach I didn't like it because it totally slowed down the battle almost to a standstill and that's something I never saw happening in Halo 3 barring someone put up a bubble shield but we're not going to have equipment in this game. We're going to have power-ups, and it's going to be something you spawn with. It's You could consider it perks, basically. And that's been a big complaint with a lot of people. They say it's trying to take the Call of Duty approach. And it's not, in my opinion, uh, it's totally a different thing than, like, spawning with sleight of hand and stuff. You're spawning with a certain armor ability. I don't think it's taking the Call of Duty route at all, but I'm not going to get into that argument in this video. So... Reach is a good game to play to kind of get used to utilizing your armor ability, which is going to be a big factor in the game. But Halo 3 is going to be a really important game to play for one thing only, and I'm using it right now, the battle rifle. You need to get great with this gun because I promise you it's going to be the go-to gun in Halo 4. It's not going to be the DMR. It's not going to be the pistol. It's going to be battle rifle all day. It does look like the DMR is going to be a little bit more effective in uh, Halo 4 than it was in Reach. The one big problem I had in Reach with the DMR was that you'd get into a gunfight, you would destroy some kid, and then you'd turn to try to get the double kill on someone, and your reticle would be enormous because you just got in a gunfight. So it would be very difficult to get any headshots or get any nice shots on the person, period, because your reticle is big and that means your accuracy is terrible. So I recommend Halo 3 for BR practice, Halo 3 for map practice. The maps are going to be a little bit more Halo 3 style in from what I've seen, I've only seen three maps, but they look, aside from one, they look small. They look Halo 3, Halo 2 style. Not a whole lot of the Reach, uh, Boardwalk, massive sprawling maps where there's a million places to hide. I wasn't a fan of that in Reach, and I think it really slowed the gameplay down. I like maps like Lockout, where a game to 50 takes five minutes total. I think that's great. So, in my opinion, you guys, I would be picking up both of these games and playing them. Now, I started too early. If you have another game to play, Go ahead and enjoy that and play that until maybe September. But a month, maybe two months in advance, it's time to start playing Halo 3 and Halo Reach to try to really get back in the swing of things for Halo 4. Because like I said, you don't want to go cold turkey into Halo 4 and be some terrible kid and have a terrible KDR, a terrible win ratio to start off with in the first couple weeks. I would not recommend that. You want to get the noobs that just picked up the game and you want to destroy a bunch of kids because you're going to be refined you're going to be ready to go so I recommend playing a lot of Halo 3 a little bit of Halo Reach get used to the armor abilities get used to uh, sprint because that's going to be a factor in the game and hell you could play a little bit of Call of Duty because sprint in Halo 
4 is going to be the left joystick, I believe, pushing it down. So you guys that have uh, PlayStation 3s, I don't have a lot to tell you. I would go get an Xbox 360. You can find one of those on Craigslist for probably like $60 nowadays. So anyway, guys, I am out. I will talk to you soon. Later, guys.